Pugh. Pugh, that'll do it! That will do it! Pugh for Bournemouth! The roof of the Gold Sands is raised! Everyone here knows what that could mean to this football Well, that wasn't bad, was it? Good afternoon, Bournemouth fans. Boscombe were rampant against the Terriers today in a five-star performance in front of 1,200 jubilant Cherries at the Vice Halsey Stadium in a convincing win over Huddersfield. If you want a performance to greet the return of fans at Dean Court, that was it. We've always known that home fans can make a difference at home and the boost that it provided the players in red and black today, well, it was more than ever against... Against a Huddersfield side that barely looked a threat. With this result in mind, you can probably look back at our 1-1 draw at Middlesbrough when they had a 1,000 fans in and actually think to yourself, that wasn't a bad result. But either way, we're now going to chat to someone who is live at the ground, by the way, of Paul Kenwood. Oh, amazing. Surprise, Phil. How do you feel? Well, <laughs> that was exhausting, I must admit. It's been a while since I've been shouting and screaming at the, the, the referee and getting the players going. It was just a brilliant, brilliant experience. You know, I'm so glad to be to be privileged enough to be able to get a ticket for today. I mean, I was called yesterday by the ticket office um, to get a ticket for today. And uh, wow, what a performance as well for the fans who were there. What a time to be back there. So what stand were you in today? Uh, the Ted Mack stand today. South stand. So lots of leg room. And uh, you saw, well, I mean, what a start to the game that was. Uh, a number of goals, your end of the pitch, and you know Dom Solanke scoring yeah. two early doors. He was on a hat trick, but what what a fast start! We haven't had that in a long time, have we? No, I think I don't know if it was the fans being there or just you know they, they just came out the blocks so quick today, and um, every little mistake that Huddersfield made in defence, we we snapped upon it and you know punished them, which was great. Um, I'm quite lucky that I'm stood actually in the floodlights at the moment. <laughs> Superb, I was about <laughs> to say, it'd be pitch black. <laughs> lighting back, lighting is is very good where you are yeah. and uh, t tell me how it felt then you know was it almost a bit emotional uh yeah i think it was there was the you know the the rainbow laces campaign you know and the the videos before the game about that as well and there was the black lives matter you know taking the knee and people applauding and the whole experience just sort of was a little bit emotional being back um able to to show our appreciation for you know everything it almost felt a bit like you know it was a, a, a it was something for jason to to take to the players you know this this these are the guys who couldn't make it to see us get relegated you know these are the fans that stood by us even though we were relegated and then, you know we've we've come out in as many as we can come out tonight to to show our support today to show our support and yeah it was there was there was a bit of emotion there. I think there's a lot of passion today from the fans. A lot yeah. of it was, was brilliant. Has it has it given you a, a new lease of life support in AFCB? Because we text privately, obviously, quite a lot. And you said, you know what, all this kind of online streaming stuff, it, it sort of, you know, it is the best thing that we can have. But it, you know, it does get you down by looking at a, uh, a screen so much, whether it's participating in these or you're watching the game. So it must have felt so good to actually go back into your second home, basically. Yeah, exactly. It was exactly that. It, I had, you know, gotten to the point where actually, you know, football was a TV participation thing, you know, and, and I'd lost the, the, the enthusiasm a little bit for it because, because I've been unable to, you know, just walk. And I mean, a lot of it is still not possible. The social aspect, you know, having a drink at half time, those kind of things. And you're just going to get used to the way things are going to be for a little bit longer, I think. Mm. Uh, like the masks, you know, we have to wear masks. Yeah. Got one of those. I uh, got a, a face covering as well. So I had, I had both that I went into this game with. Um, I wasn't sure which would work best with the glasses and found out neither do. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> There's it's nothing you can do about that. I'll find, a, I'll find a way around that another time. But uh, I was just so happy to be back. And, you know, I'm, I'm glad that they let us come back, you know, and, and appreciation for the club. I mean, the, the, they actually did a walk round at the end. I did a live stream to uh, yourself and Mr. Tiggs uh, yeah. on, on our WhatsApp group. Unfortunately, you couldn't make it, but it was yeah, the, yeah, the was... players wandering around at the end. 
um, coming in applauding us in the south stand and you know I think Junior had some uh, some family there as well so he he got, came over to the front to, to see somebody but it was it was a lovely lovely experience and I'm there on Tuesday so, amazing and yeah, not happy. having and not having eleven thousand people there means the four G's pretty good where you are hence we're able to do this because <laughs> usually and also yeah, exactly. um, we're very pleased to see this man back as well aren't we Paul. <laughs> What a guy! That's from Tom uh, Jordan. He's just sent me that footage. What a guy! And I, I think the fact that there were fans from the North Stand mixed in with the East Stand and the Main Stand and the South Stand, then that actually each stand had an element of of people singing. So actually, it had a better atmosphere than when it's full. Yeah, for yeah. me, uh, it felt like it. Certainly at the South Stand, you know, there was a lot of chanting going on. I did the only Jason gives a wave or Tyndall gives a wave chant. I think that I heard all game, but. Uh, it was it was really nice. Yeah, it was really good. Great. Right, so good to have you on. Uh, yeah, and no it's really great to have some post-match reaction live from Dean Court. Yeah. So really appreciate well, it. Hopefully mate. you'll be here too soon. Very, yeah, certainly hope so. And, you know, <laughs> we've got loads of footage collated from yourself, from Tom Jordan, from Ian, from Kirk, yeah. loads of, from Kerry, loads of people have got. And there's a huge match day experience vlog. It'll probably be about 20 minutes long. It's going to be out tonight. So Maybe. for all the people that haven't gone, hopefully it'll retell the story of the day. <laughs> I mean, it's it. You know, it's, it's been, been a great fun. Yeah, I and um, w what way to do it with five goals, eh? Exactly. Yeah, what a performance. So uh, anyway, I'll let you guys carry on because I've got a, a bit of a walk home. No worries. Enjoy, Paul Kenwood. Cheers. Thank you very much. Right. That was uh, Paul Kenwood with us live from the Vitality Stadium. Now, if you are at Dean Court or, or have been to Dean Court, at the bottom of the screen is a link where you can come on live from your mobile. Just go to afcbpodcast.com forward slash take part. We've also got people who've been sat watching at home on AFCB TV. Plus, we'll be playing clips throughout the show that people are sending in. Yeah, that's going to be interesting. So if you've got any video clips um, and you want to WhatsApp them, there's the number uh, 0772 We're going to get your clips played out throughout the show. That was Nonny's Red Army, courtesy of Tom Jordan. Also, Kirk Tovey sent in a clip of Dom Solanke's second goal, which I'll get up for you very, very shortly. However, in the meantime, Billy, Daniel and John are with us. Heather's standing by as well. But firstly, uh, we'll bring in Billy. Billy, how are you? Oh, that's just five-star performance. That was just fantastic. It feels so great to... I mean, all season we've been looking for a, a 90 minutes of just pure perfection. And yeah. apart from Barnsley, that was it. That was brilliant. Such a good performance. And, you know, so many things to talk about. And um, I'm, I'm certainly sure we will. Also, John is with us, as we said as well. John? Come on, boys. Come on, lads. Oh Cracking, my god, that's mate. what it means. Oh, that's what we wanted, wasn't it? If only you got oh. a hat trick, if only you got a third, oh, but yeah. I tell you what, also we got Daniel here. Oh, he's Neil. I, got, I did not pre who predicted that. No, I, I, I predicted um, four one, to be honest. I went two nil. So you know what? I mean, you know, like, obviously I was watching it from home. Um, but, you know, I was excited for everyone else and I forgot to do my Super 6 today. So I've got zero points. Really oh, annoyed no. me. Well, I got just before three. Oh, did you? You well, know, like, even still, I would have... Five, no. Exactly. I wouldn't have. Now, would, would Daniel have? Daniel is in Florida. Daniel, how are you, buddy? Good. How are all of you three? Hi, oh, Daniel. All right? Brilliant. Very good, mate. Big smile on your face. What a game, eh? It was amazing. Uh, it was just unbelievable, and I won't say because of the fans, because I was I watched this video that they posted yeah. on Twitter. The players were happy that the fans were back, so I think they have the players a little bit more confidence, so God bless that fans can come back, and that was a good score, so... Yeah, hopefully not. That was a phenomenal scoreline. <laughs> we've, been, we've been really missing those fast awesome. starts, haven't we, John? But, you know, today they delivered. I'm sure it gave the players that extra 10%, extra 20% even by the looks of it. But such a fast start. We were pressing early and Huddersfield yeah, barely had a chance absolutely. to play today, did they? No, I, I thought that was... It was like when I came on last time and I said I we didn't play like how we did against Barnsley. That was that again for me, that that aggression and that real attacking intent and 
I mean, the game was pretty much sewed up in the first sort of 20 minutes, wouldn't it, really? So, oh my god, yeah. I mean, you know, talk us oh. through you talk us through the first goal from Dom Solanke, then, if you if you can even remember it, because I can't. Oh, it's, you have to go back now. You've got, the, got five <laughs> of them to sort of look yeah. over and um, sort of be happy with. But yeah, was that the one where he um, sort of dinked it, wasn't it? Yeah, it was. It was uh, the assist. It, but... I think it was David Brooks who who played it through to him. And yeah, as he as he sort of you know bared down on goal, he it was <sighs> an absolute superb dink. And yeah, I was just so you know so pleased for him scoring in front of his, his home fans, who he's he's not really had the best relationship with yet. In terms of you know we've all got behind him, but he's never really delivered in front of us. But this is the first time he has. And a lot of people have been texting me saying they were actually really emotional when they saw him score now whether that was just the fact that you know we scored a goal in front of fans again or whether it was him a player that sort of overcome adversity so to speak and he really delivered with a complete performance today but so many players did didn't they John I thought every single player even Jack Simpson who came in superb well yeah I'll just say as, as still a relatively new fan obviously I I was uh I was living in Bournemouth. Um, I don't currently right now, but um, yeah, I was living there. Then during the lockdown, I was supporting them just to the end of um, their tenure in the Premier League. And um, yeah, yeah Solanke then, he, I could see like there was a player there, but he, I don't know if it was because he hadn't played much before then. Um, mm. But you can really see now like there's confidence flowing through his veins. I remember his Leicester goals and they were, do you remember they sort of and we talked about it on the on the uh, pod after? Yeah. He said how they kind of trickled in, but they weren't really. I think it was you, Billy. You said Dom Solanke scores those kind of goals. Yeah, Do you remember that? He, he, he had that goal against Liverpool in the cup as well. Yeah. And everyone was just waiting for him to score that first goal, and as it just slowly went over against Luton, I remember being in the North Stand, just the, the crowd just went wild, and uh, it was just it was just so great for him. And I love him to bits. He's a he's an amazing player. He's my favourite, so yeah. <laughs> so, so um, you know, talk us through the team lineup when you saw it at two o'clock, Billy, because you know, surprise inclusion by the way of Jack Simpson, of course. And uh, I thought he had a superb game. He he brought out he brought out his inner Messi at times with some of his footwork, but really good performance by him. And uh, in general, we were pretty good. But that team at two o'clock, what did you think? Where was Chris Meppham? That was my main question. I mean, I've got nothing against Jack Simpson, but I would prefer to have Simpson in that back row with him and Cook. A, 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 like a solid yeah. back two. Yeah. And that he, Mepham's come in and he's done the Ake role in bringing in a solid centre centre uh, defence. Yeah. But um, no, I've never doubted Simpson, but he did a fantastic job today and hopefully we can see him as a re frequent defender in the, in the few games to come. I think mm. he really grew into the game as well because the commentators were saying early on that he give he gave the ball away quite a bit, and then I, there was a moment in the game where he really got back. I can't remember when it was. They had an attacker through that was getting through onto goal, and Simpson was there, wasn't he? Do you remember? Yeah, do you remember that? I don't know. Yeah, I, I so many you. moments to go over. It's like what, what can we choose? You know, it's yeah. crazy. What I'm going to do is, whilst we've got people in the stream that we can speak to that have been to Dean Court, we're going to bring them in straight away. And there's a face that's very familiar that you'll recognise that we're going to bring on now, uh, by the way, of Kirk Tovey, who is with Owen in in his car. Kirk and Owen, how are you? We can't hear you very well. It's very jumpy, so I might come out and try and come back in again, if you can understand what I just said. I can certainly understand. Absolutely no problem at all. So Kirk's going to jump out the stream and he's going to come back in, hopefully rotate. But yeah, uh, really, really interested to hear what people who've who've just been at Dean Court's got to say. So, Billy, um, man of the match, performance out of 10. I mean, was it us being, I mean, you know, did Huddersfield gift it to us? Were we, were we good and Huddersfield poor? You know, did we make them poor? Were Huddersfield just so poor that we played well? It's a mix of both. I think Huddersfield just didn't turn up today at all. I mean, no disrespect for them, but they they didn't show the fight that they were there. It was just like they were just nowhere, to be honest. They were just nowhere. And it was just out of 10, we, we were just out there. We were just a nine today. We were just on fire. And as always, my man of the match this week, it will go to Solanke. Dom Solanke. Uh, Daniel, your man of the match? Um, Solanke. 
look at this. Like about a month ago, these conversations wouldn't be happening. John, yeah, but not John. John. I'm going to be different. I'm going to go with my oh. man. He, he was my favourite from the start, as I said before. Got to be Stan. Stan. Yeah, that, yeah, that, in, yeah. that individual yeah. class as well. And throughout, throughout the game, just, I mean, ev everyone could get man of the match, to be fair, but yeah, yeah it's got to be one. So it'll be Stanislas, yeah. For right. Me. We're going to bring in some uh, more people very shortly, including Kirk and Owen, who, who have come back. So hopefully they can hear me okay. Right. Uh, thank you so much, guys. Uh, really yeah, appreciate you. Cheers, coming lads. Got to go. Yeah, let's go. Enjoy. On, let's go. Cheers. Cheers, John. Thank you very much. Thanks, lads. Enjoy. Really appreciate it. Also, Billy as well. Thank you, sir. Yeah. Jeez, and same also same. Daniel as well. Absolutely superb. So then, Dan's here. Uh, it's good to see Dan on the stream again. Jeremy's here and Heather too. Dan, how are you, sir? Oh, I couldn't be much better. I couldn't be much better. <laughs> what a performance. So many, so many good things to say. You know, I, I don't even know where to start, to be honest. And it's, you know, we're sat here having watched it at home. And we are absolutely beaming. And I i don't know, I just get the feeling that um, we wouldn't be as beaming if we had a 1-5-0 and no one was there. I don't know, it just feels a different yeah, thing. Yeah, it, like it just come sort of together again. performance that, mm. uh, that the return of the fans as well. Um, whether that contributed largely to it or, you know, it was a bit of... Because Huddersfield made quite a few changes, I, uh, I think, didn't they? They, uh, mm. they were saving for their next game, which was a bit of a strange tactic. And obviously they brought their keeper off at... Uh, half time uh with, the, with an injury but yeah no I, I think that it you know guys you mentioned the middlesbrough performance as well that perhaps that was a better performance than we initially thought you know with the inclusion of fans then yeah agreed jeremy pleased absolutely i it's funny i i caught myself one eye on our game and the score of the norwich game and uh man when blackburn equalized i thought this is great this this is gonna set up to be the perfect day uh, and then a few minutes later, they, of course, they went ahead. But, um, man, uh, Dom Solanke, what, my goodness, I was his biggest critic a month or two ago. And now it's like he's found, he's found it. And so I'm pleased for him. I, I still think Lewis Cook, it, 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 talk about another guy who's completely turned it around. He controls the midfield. He looks like he belongs. Dare I say he reminds me in many ways now of Jack Wilshire. Um, yeah. he, he has the, he's got the same build. Uh, his game is very similar in how he does things. And so I, I couldn't be more pleased than – and, again, Asmir Begovic, I mean, my goodness, the save he made in the first half. I think we were up 2-0, two, two and, man, it was a it was deflection one off actually. one of our guys. Oh, I beg your pardon? Yeah. I think was it was one nil actually. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, the reaction off the deflection of our own defender, I, I mean, my goodness, that guy, I'm old, and he's getting close to my age, and for him to react and respond that way. So I think what a great <laughs> what a great match. And, and I'll say this, Sam, if, if we can just put a few of these together in a row, we seem to do this, and then we'll have a draw, or mm -hmm. heaven forbid a law. If we can put about three or four together and either take the lead and or just get ahead and out in front of the pack, I think we're going to be all right. And I think we win the league or we're finished top two. But we've got to separate ourselves. We have to build on this. Yeah, no, I agree. And lots of people in chat are uh, uh, waxing lyrical over Dom Solanke. So before I go to Heather to ask her view, should we, should we enjoy some raw footage of that second goal from Dom Solanke? I think we should. This is, this is courtesy of Kirk. This is from the Ted Max stand. Here we go. I was wrong. <laughs> that was great. <laughs> I love the way that Kirk says I was wrong, obviously with this whole 20 goal a season claim. Um, we're all smiling. He's Heather. going to get 20 goals. <laughs> yeah. Well, Heather, I mean, what a good day it's been, eh? Yeah, it's amazing. It's, it's the first game that I've watched with the crowd in. Mm. so um it's just a completely different energy isn't it it's like um phil billing was again really good mm. he, he seems to have i don't know if you saw the interview i missed it john said um there was an interview with him on the pre-match thing oh yeah saying that he'd had a few issues or something but now that they were over and he was back to back to his mm. best or something 
Yeah, you know what? I mean, there's there were rumours about Phil Billing, whether these are true or not, that there was um, a bid from a, a club abroad that he was sort of interested in. But, um, it, you know, it didn't happen. Apparently, he mm. was sort of you know, tempted to go, and that sort of put him off for a bit. But he is fully focused on AC Bournemouth. And some of his performances recently, Heather, it's like it's like a different player. I mean, you know, you yeah. were on the free falls about two months ago where, you know, people say that they'll start the engine of his car because they want to drive him back to Huddersfield <laughs> or wherever. It, he's a different man, isn't he? He is. I mean, I do quite enjoy him running around like a headless chicken, but that's just my own amusement. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, it was amazing. I just and seeing yeah. the younger players get on as well. That was really great. Yeah, no, it 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 absolutely was. And, you know, I was looking at the bench, Jeremy. I was just, you know, looking because I always look to see who's yeah. who's around. And then I see a name and I'm like, who on earth is that? 16 year old. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Uh, that's a scary. Well, I, whether that's scary or if that's a good thing, you you start to build some depth on the bench and you bring the young kids in. And what what a great game to bring some of these players in and let them get some real game time and real experience. Um, I got two things I want to. Well, one I want to ask, and then one comment. The, my question is: Do we need to worry about Dan Juma? It not from an injury perspective, but from the January transfer window perspective. Is that a worry? Is that a legitimate worry? Well, I tell you what. I'll ask. I'll ask that to the, a man who has got a lot of information about uh, Kirk, um, yeah, about Dan Juma, and that's Kirk, and okay. he's got a lot of tactical insight and analysis as well. And I was playing football with him yesterday. Actually, the vlog of that is going to be coming up very soon because nice. his team smashed us. So let's not talk about that for too long. Um, <laughs> here he is with um, Owen after the game. Kirk, how are you? Very, very happy. Just like Jeff Lerma. Um, Smiles are beaming. So, um, I'm I, I, I actually I'm speechless for a change. Wow. Did you did you hear Jeremy's question about Jeff Lerma? Uh, sorry about Dan Juma there. No, I didn't. So um, it, it's a bit jumpy. It's okay at the moment, but if it jumps out, I'll let you know. No worries. Well, we'll put it to Jeremy again, who can ask the question once more for you, mate. Yeah, Kirk. Uh, great to see you and your son. Um, I, I'm curious. It, do we need to worry about Dan Juma for the January transfer window? I don't think Dan Juma will go anywhere. I think he's quite content with the way I the way I view it. And there's an opportunity for players like Dan Juma and Brooks to continue where they're how they're playing this season. And you know, um, and and hopefully we can progress to hopefully get promoted, automatics, playoffs. You know, in games like this, we're just going to blow teams away. And when we perform like we did mm -hmm. in the first half, there's not many teams that can stand toe to toe with us. So um, I, I think that. It, Really for players like Dan Juma and Brooks to think about moving on in January because they're in a good place at the moment and you know we're having met better days than we're having worse days. Agree. Yeah, Sam, and, can, uh, I, can I say yeah, one on, thing? And I'm, I'm 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 losing power on my laptop here, so no, I just want to say it it made a difference, and I think Heather mentioned it. Just watching it and the fans uh, being in the stands and listening to the Red Army chant and the red and black or whatever. I, I mean, it was so nice to hear it. And I think that's where a small yeah. stadium like uh, Dean Court really makes a difference. And she said it best. That, to me, energized the players. Because to a man on the pitch, those guys just seemed like they were shot out of a cannon. And mm -hmm. that's what the fans want. And what a great way to, to reintroduce the fans into the game. And all the way here in North Carolina in the United States – I could see it and feel it just watching it. So kudos to the fans. Great job. And Sam, thanks for the opportunity to, to interact with you guys. This is a lot of fun. I really appreciate it. Top man. Appreciate that, Jeremy. Yeah, many thanks. Thanks for coming on. Uh, so, Kirk, a question for – actually for Owen. James McCaffrey has said, Owen, who who is your man on the match today, mate? I've got to give it to Dom Solanke. I could have also given it to David Brooks. They, that yeah, Junior Stanislas, I could have given it to anyone. Everyone just played amazing. Anyone could have earned it. Uh, do you think, I mean, obviously you've been on a player rating show with um, with Tom Jordan before. Do you think this will be one of the harder ones to actually score someone low? Pro yeah, probably. I think everyone's got to get high numbers out of the 10. Probably the lowest you'll get is 7 or 8, surely. I mean, you could praise loads of players on that pitch today. I mean, Begovic, safe as houses. Smudge, looks like he's got his mojo back. Lewis at the heart of it. Stanislas, 
just is just an all-rounder. Brooks was a baller. Dom Solanke, probably the best complete centre-forward performance I've ever seen him play. Um, that is going to be one hell of a job for whoever's on Teach, teach Talks. Because that would yeah. be... You, you couldn't criticise anyone today. None of them. Even the players that came on. The game management from JT, get blood in the youth. I, it was almost just a perfect day. It's one of the best Saturdays of my life. <laughs> wow. Aww. That's amazing. Well, I'll tell you what, that's um, that's a really nice thing to say. And what we're mm. going to do in a moment, we're going to get your uh, yours and Kirk's... Uh, sorry, you are Kirk. Your and <laughs> uh, your Owen's view from after the game, she did a little match report to camera, so we'll get that on. That's also going to be on the vlog later on. Guys, thank you so much for coming on. We'll let you drive home now. Thank you so much. Brilliant. And it's just not about the guys, the, you know, the fans that were here today. It's the fans at home as well. That performance was for everyone. You know, it, we, we're very grateful. We're fortunate to be in this position. But you know what? Without the fans behind, you know, paying the money to stream and watch, we're all in this together. Top man. Thank you very much, Kirk. Really appreciate it. And Owen as well, as ever. Thank you so much. Live from Dean Court, that is Kirk and Owen. And if you want to take part, what we're going to do is we'll pop the direct StreamYard link in on Facebook, YouTube, and also on uh, whatever other platforms we're broadcasting on. I can't remember, Twitch, Twitter, whatever. Um, so, yeah, we've just got the three of us at the moment, but more are welcome in. I know that uh, a few people had an issue. We'll come to Dan shortly. But first, there have been people on chat saying... We want Filippo. We want Filippo. <laughs> well, you know what? <laughs> like a magician, I'm going to bring him in. Here he is, Filippo. Uh, yes. How are you? Yes. Ciao. I said, ciao, ciao, tutti. I said, uh, I can't believe that uh, everybody wanted me, and I arrived. I entered the, in the stream yard at the right moment. I can't Perfect. believe that. <laughs> great great yes. win today, 5-0, probably our most convincing performance of the, se of the season, Filippo, surely? Without probably, is the best performance of the season so far. And, uh, and it's the third clean sheet in a row. And uh, yeah, that's a, that's a super, super performance today. But uh, I have a question, because uh, uh, when the lineups... Uh, came on uh, on the screen uh, before the match uh, i was a bit surprised to see david brooks playing uh, in the free in attack so my question is uh, should jason tindall play david brooks uh, in the attack uh, every game mm, that's a question i'll put to dan actually should he this is the thing i i think uh Brooks is so such quality that he he'll play well pretty much wherever you play him uh, in an attacking or midfield position. But I think Brooks's best position is as a right mid in that four four two. I think where he has the uh, you know he's not as that not not playing as the right winger but playing a little bit behind has that ability to cut cut inside and create something cut inside on his left foot. I feel like he has more freedom in that role. Um, I'm more of a fan of him in that right mid spot. But saying that, you know, he's had some incredible performances uh, at right wing as well. Um, so I think, I think, yeah, right mid was probably his uh, best position, but you know, with quality of David Brooks has, yeah, he can, can really, he can play on the left uh, if he wanted to as well, if we needed him to play there. Sam, I can't hear you. Yeah, no, that's because I, I, I pressed the wrong okay. button. I was like, is it my head? No, no, no. Like, <laughs> yeah, um, a lot of people were talking about you. Uh, whilst I was just flashing up some messages whilst Dan was talking. You've got your own fan club going on here, uh, you Filippo. And uh, yeah, uh, one of the guys, uh, Dave Watkins, has said, where is Filippo based? For, so for people that haven't seen you before, can you tell us a little bit about you and where you are located in the world? Yeah, uh, I'm located in uh, Rome, Italy, <laughs> in Amazing. the capital. And uh, yeah, that is. And uh, it was uh, it was a bit when I started following the team. Uh, it was a bit difficult uh, to find streamings uh, for to see the matches. And uh, now I I started paying uh, for. Uh, I started watching on uh, uh, ASB. AFCB TV live because uh, um, 
uh, Italian uh, authorities, uh, uh, but in general mm. authorities, in general the EFL, the EFL is fighting uh, against the piracy, against the illegal streams. They want to, yeah. they want the games to be watched on the on uh, I follow AFCB TV live. So I started paying. I'm paying uh, uh, monthly. Mm. So it's uh, it's twenty twenty pounds. Uh, it's uh, uh, twenty two euros and fifty cents. And um, someone asked. Um, someone asked, how did you come across AFCB? Now we've asked you this question before, but for people who who maybe don't know, can you tell us how you how you found out about us? Yeah, uh, I found out. Uh, I found out about the team because, uh, of course, they when they arrived in Premier League and they played, uh, uh, for example, on uh, on Saturday night, on Monday night, or at uh, on Saturday at lunchtime. Uh, every game, uh, um, every single game which is not uh, uh, Saturday at uh, at three p.m. is broadcasted in Italy. Uh, so we had. Uh, in that year, in the first uh, season of uh, of the Cherries in the Premier League, it was uh, Premier League was broadcasted by Fox Sports, and uh, yeah, uh, I, I started seeing the team. I I was astonished by the they first win at Stamford Bridge with Glenn Murray, yeah, yeah. Got Glenn Murray's goal. <laughs> yeah, back in December, and uh, that astonished. Me and then uh, a week after, uh, the Chinese beat my United. So, uh, and in the following years, uh, I I saw this team which uh, uh, which reached safety in uh, in a comfortable way, without uh, some fighting a lot uh, with with some game. Uh, sorry, I don't. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm okay. losing myself. Sorry. No, yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's all good. And it's, it, I mean, you're one of many fans who has fallen in love with AFC Bournemouth after they have have been given the global exposure through the Premier League. If we had stayed a, a good championship side and never got promoted, you might not even know about us. So the Premier League has has done us wonders, I've got to say. And obviously, you're you know you're a big fan. You're you know you're paying your own money to watch AFC Bournemouth play from Italy when you're a fan of like Roma. So it's, to me, it's just like, wow, uh, amazing, Philippe. Yeah, but uh, I'm paying uh, myself. Uh, Roma, uh, I mean, uh, Roma games, uh, uh, I mean, Sports Italy is paid by my dad and my mother. So I can, uh, yes, <laughs> I can pay myself. <laughs> Brilliant. Uh, you've got to say, amazing to have you on. Uh, really appreciate it, Filippo. Um, thank you very much for coming Thanks, on the chat once again. Thanks, Sam. I want uh, only one thing. I I really want uh, back that uh, that picture of uh, uh, I think it was uh, Jesus Christ with the face of Dom Solanke. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I, I think, yeah. It I think Ethan, Ethan that had that. Ethan, uh, yeah, it Ethan, it, yeah. It's yeah. you know what and we the, will find it and hopefully Ethan can come on. But if he might have actually been today, yeah. I don't know. He might have actually gone today. But either way, we will try to get that photo <laughs> on the screen because that was yeah. Okay. I mean. He deserves that status. So, Thank you so much. Every, everybody, everybody wants to listen to them. That uh, up the cherries. Up the cherries. Thank you very up much. The <laughs> up the cherries. <laughs> See you on Tuesday. See you on Tuesday, guys. See bye you bye. on Tuesday. Bye. Uh, Morgan and John uh, standing by next. So just before we say goodbye to you two, um, Heather, man of the match, did you say John Solanke? Good to be Solanke, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But then, you know, there are others that deserve a shout. I mean, okay, what was your goal of the game, Heather? What what was that? Sorry. I mean, like, what was your goal of the game? The goal, I think, it has to be the Surridge one. Well, just because it's Sam Surridge, or yeah, I mean, personally, no, just the way it was. Yeah, yeah. Fair play, uh, Dan. What was your goal? Yeah, no, game? that's a good show. It was a w really well worked goal, but you it was. can't ignore the Stanislas. Uh, I, mm. I think that is that's got to be the the goal of the match. Amongst there wasn't a bad goal there at all. There wasn't any sort of no. jammy rubbish goal that sort of bundled <laughs> off someone. Like it was all quality goals, which is great to see as well. But yeah, that Stanislas goal potential for goal of the season for us um, this season, I reckon. Early contender. It's the, it's the time of um, you know you kind of wish that you had match of the day to look at uh, you know tonight. So I mean I know it's on quest but what will we get like 90 seconds 
and sure. barely any analysis, maybe a, a brief sentence from Colin Murray and his guest. But on match of the day, you get that full 15 minutes you get Gary yeah. and Especially with this Dan kind of performance. Yeah, That's exactly. That's what we put you for, Sam. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, I don't know about that. <laughs> Not so good with the punditry. But anyway, um, Heather and Dan, thank you so much for coming on. Cheers, Sam. Thank you for having me. <laughs> Cheers, Thank you very much. Really appreciate it. And so Craig is standing by, as is Morgan and John. But we're going to go over to our correspondent, Kirk Tovey at Dean Court, who sent this with Owen 10 minutes ago. So today I told myself that it doesn't matter what happens on the pitch today. It's not a time to be critical, but a time to be grateful that we've got the opportunity to watch live football again. Fortunately, the boys put in an absolute blinding performance, dominant display, quality all over the pitch, clinical finishing, three points on the board, goal difference improved. So we are happy. What was your favourite goal, Owen? Uh, probably the junior Salas run. And uh, your man in the match? Dom Solanke. Can't disagree with that. Probably just nips David Brooks. But we are happy cherries here at the Vitality. We're with you all at home. Come on, you cherries. Beautiful. Nice to see that. And all this footage is going on our Matchday Experience vlog. So if you haven't subscribed, I advise you to subscribe because later on tonight, there'll be a massive video that uh, hopefully for people at home that have forgot what it's like going to football, then you'll get a brief reminder via lots of footage, including stuff like this. So good, so good, so good. I'll stop there. Right. Um, so Morgan's here. We're going to bring in Morgan now. Morgan uh, and also John and Craig as well with Max still to come. So Morgan, I'll come to you first because you've been waiting the longest. Uh, let's just unmute your mic there. You may have to unmute yourself actually before I can speak to you. How are you? Five nil, pleased? Can you hear me? Yeah. How are you? Loud and clear. Very well. Firstly, I'd just like to give a shout out to Willow for mucking up his uh, pronunciation of Sam Sturridge. It, it's Sam Surridge because uh, maybe he picked that one up for me, you know. Uh, but um, onto the game, it was um, it, it was fantastic for minute one. It really was. It was fantastic, and I uh, um, there was a song that I that goes la 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 David David Brooks and uh, I we started that off when I went to Watford a couple of seasons ago and oh what an incredible strike it was from uh, David Brooks um but Solanke oh my god what's happened to him he's like a goal machine in um first goal was very very well played fed through from David Brooks found the bot it was straight into the Goal, it was fantastic. I can't really remember it now. It feels like ages ago. And then the second one was just even better. It was sensational from Don Sanankley. Chipped it over the goalkeeper and giving the defender no chance. It was really sublime. Um, mm. When the team came out about two o'clock, I was thinking, where's Sam Surridge? This is why I'm not a manager yeah. and JT is a manager. Um, to be honest with you, that's just been... It, it's probably been the best AFC Bournemouth performance I can remember in some time. One thing I was going to ask, can anyone else remember the last time we scored five goals in a league game for some time? Because I can't. I think the last time we scored, I think it was 4-1 against Leicester. Was it Brighton away? Quite possibly. Could have been. Yeah, I'm just, I'm just trying to think yeah. now. Cause I'm, I'm thinking of all the sort of you know goal-scoring performances that we had. By the way, in the comments... Um, a lot of people talking about uh, Sweet Caroline. I've, I've just thought to myself, like, this is a YouTube channel. We've just played a song that's probably going to demonetize this video now. So, like, I know it's only pennies, but it doesn't matter. It's going to say, you played Neil Diamond on this channel or Barry Manley, whatever it is. I can't remember. Yeah, um, uh, yeah I, I, I think you may be right. By the way, Mad Hat uh, Hutter, FFS, Eddie may have gone, but Sweet Caroline is still here. Now, people might be surprised to know that JT 
was actually the catalyst behind many of the musical choices. He actually wanted us to play We Will Rock You before kickoff, but um, apparently some people made him change his mind on that. And I don't know, I think they made a compromise with uh, Sweet Caroline. So that's the story of that. John, 5-0, I mean, a five-star performance. Fans are back. It all came together really nicely today, didn't it, mate? It really did. Um, I I kind of wasn't able to sort of keep fully focused on the match for the first about 10 minutes. Um, luckily, I was watching when the first goal went in. Um, and from then on, it was it was really... It was it was very dominant in terms of the score. The stats are interesting because it was almost 50-50 possession and we had similar shots. Um, and in fact, and once the fifth goal went in, we got five goals from five shots on target. So mm. it was very clinical. Um, unfortunately, we then took another three on target that were saved. But uh, So that ruined that 100% <laughs> performance. But um, it was... I was a little bit sort of, even when we were 2 3 nil up, it, it did still just concern me a little bit how many shots Huddersfield were getting in. It wasn't exactly like they were being all that incisive. And apart from one world-class save from Begovic, yeah. he didn't really have any other decent saves to make, even if they did put quite a few on target. Um, it was fascinating to see a complete unknown on the bench. Um, a player that I would love to know if anyone had heard of uh, a Johnny Birchall before. Uh, we saw him on the bench because I'd looked and you know found him in the under 18s, not even in the under 21s when I looked online for him. So, um, and I think his Twitter account was probably blown up by this point uh, from Bournemouth fans trying to find him. Um, I would, uh, before anything else, I would give a huge shout out to Stanislas, his yeah. performance, because the really weird thing was for me watching that game trying to nail down exactly what formation we were playing because junior stanislas was basically playing as a left wing back for large portions of that game particularly from goal kicks and he was sort of the real person that was an option down the left hand side and really hugging that side quite often but then he'd just tr stroll in field he'd find pockets he'd be in spaces and his defensive work has impressed me more than anything else from him this season because he's always been a player that I think, as soon as something goes wrong, he throws up his hands and goes, oh. <laughs> yeah. but this, but as much as he still does that when he plays a pass that isn't good enough and we don't get the ball through, um, his defensive work has still been really impressive. He really put a job in this in this game, in other games where he's been in the middle of a, he's been in a midfield three, he's really put in the defensive work. And that goal, um, I think the Huddersfield defence made that look a little bit better than it was, but it was still a fantastic goal. Yeah. Uh, just uh, that is an icing on the cake to, did to it, his performance. It did it surprise you that, uh, I mean, a lot of us were thinking, okay, what are we going to do now that Rico's out? And some people were thinking, uh, you know, Kelly can maybe go on the left side, or some people were even suggesting, you know, Junior Stanislas could play deeper as well and mm. you know, be that wing back. So did it surprise you with the inclusion of Jack Simpson today? Oh, yeah. But that's mostly mm. because Mepham was injured. I think if Mepham was fit, then he would have played. Yeah. But um, it was it was, it was was actually, I didn't think for a second that Stanislas would be playing at left wing back, I mean, sort of left mid, left wing back nominally. Um, I was actually, I saw Kirk's sort of prediction for a lineup and saw he'd put Stanislas at left wing back. And I thought, are you, what are you on? Why would you put Stanislas at left wing back? And then funnily enough, shows how much Kirk knows more than I do. But um, uh, yeah, that was, that was I was hoping Zamora would play from the start. Um, he obviously got a little bit of time, which was really nice to see. Um, and Jack Simpson started with a few poor, poorer passes forward, but really grew into the game defensively. He was actually very sound. And um, yeah, I mean, I've got really not much negative I can say about anyone, to be honest. I've got to say, Craig, um, I'll bring Craig in now. I, I was actually really surprised after that dominant first half performance and then on iFollow or you know whatever the stream is, you get the stats coming up. Yeah. And it was like 49.9% possession to us and then 50.1%. It didn't feel like that, did it? We It felt like we were on top of them for that first 45. But maybe why my head was clouded by the goals, I don't know. But it it didn't feel like that. Well, we were clinical. You know, as soon as you know, got had an opportunity in the first half, we took it. Um, Solanke was absolutely on fire. You know, fantastic. I actually <laughs> Morgan messaged me and I said he's going to get 30 goals this season now. <laughs> I changed my prediction. Um, <laughs> that. 
you know, I, I was a bit disappointed for him that he couldn't get the hat trick. Um, mm. But yeah, we were very clinical. I think Huddersfield have, were limited. I think they, as um, Willow and Chris Temple were saying, they had quite a lot of injuries. Um, so I think that they were trying to keep the possession, they were trying to keep the I think that might be where that stat was, but they didn't really do anything with it. Um, there was a couple of good saves that they were trying to pull off, but there wasn't really any... They didn't really get into a great position. Um, so I think we can control it very, very well. Um, we did allow them to have a little bit more of the ball than maybe you know we would have liked. But um, the second half, it, it felt like it felt like it fizzed out in the first, you know, 15, 20 minutes of the second half, but then come back to life. And that Stanislav goal, I actually disagree with John. Um, I think that that was a really difficult goal to score. Because the amount of players... Didn't he take on four or five? Well, it was, it was, I think it was a little bit, yeah. I mean, I, I see what John's saying because, yes, he started from deep, and when he had the ball, there were lots of Huddersfield players in front of him. But it was like the parting of the Red Sea, like he didn't have a proper challenge come in. And it reminds me actually mm -hmm. of a goal that uh, Charlie Dan, no, uh, Dan Gosling scored against mm -hmm. Hull when we won 6 1 in the Premier League. And Charlie Daniels had the ball, he cut in from the left side. And he, and he ran through, almost pedestrian-like. Didn't have to use any stepovers or anything, but he just seemed to cruise through three or four Hull defenders and laid it on to Gozzo, who, you know, left-footed instep into the corner of the net. And it was almost like, I don't know, they were, they were just... I think sometimes when you run at players at pace, like Stanislas, you did, a lot of players are scared to commit because they think they're going to give a free kick. And But it was like it was the parting of the Red Sea. And... He went, I mean, you know, to be fair, he, you know, such a composed finish as well. So I kind, I kind of see both, you know, both your points there. But um, one, one very quick thing: um, don't you think Huddersfield's um, tactical changes and their substitution are very, very old? Terrible. Well, this game's gone. You know, there's no point. You know, they've got another game on Tuesday. But I thought. You know, they were very, very weird substitutions. I thought that they would have tried to limit us to and maybe gone a bit more defensively, but the substitution didn't make any sense. Um, mm. They took a goalkeeper as well. <laughs> you know, we would have thought that they would have thought, well, let's defend a bit more and see if we can nick one, get one back, and then see what goes from there. But Mm. I think they played into our hands. Yeah, in a way. probably did. Be honest, uh, by the way, Craig, a few people have been saying your sound is a little bit muffly, which I can, you know, I can hear myself. It's sort of uh, drifting and out. So yeah, so what I'll do is I'll take you out quickly, and if you can have a little adjust, maybe it can be sorted. Yeah. It just goes muffly every so often. So have a have a look at that. And in the meantime, I'll bring in Simon Kay, who's um who's with us as well. But yeah, Morgan, you're about to make a point there. Could I just come in and say um on. Hi, Simon. Um, I think the substitution, yes, they went in and they didn't really make much of a difference for Huddersfield. But to be honest with you, I think from a minute, I think the Huddersfield um, are probably a bit fatigued there. Um, they mentioned in commentary, Chris had the, um, Chris Temple said that they had a nightmare getting their flights down here yesterday. Yes, OK, you don't turn up and perform like that, but that might have a place apart. But for minute one, they looked absolutely stunned. I think obviously having the crowd there for us today um, jeered us on every tackle, every foul. Uh, the 1,200 people on that ground make, made a massive rocket. I was joining in. It was so fantastic. But I just thought Bournemouth outplayed them in every ray today. Um, they were getting on the ball. Um, it went flat between, I don't know, 45... I've got some notes down in front of me. 45 seconds into the second period of the um, game, um, Asmir Begovic had to make a save down to his right-hand side. Um, Bournemouth's momentum, yeah. obviously, threw no up, did slack a little bit from probably the 45th minute until maybe the 6th, uh, just before we got the fourth, third and uh, fourth goal even. Uh, there were so many, I can't remember. Um, but yeah, it was absolutely brilliant 
that uh, we picked up. We found that final gear, that transition. Um, obviously, delighted for Sam Surridge. That's how you pronounce his name. So, Willow, if you're watching this back, that's one for you to take a bit. But it was just absolutely fantastic. And um, I might even have a beer tonight, Sam. Well, I, you know what? I'm just, I'm just looking at some of these comments. And James McCaffrey has just said that um, their keeper punched the changing room wall at halftime. So that's why he was subbed. No, nah, no, nah, he was injured. It got confirmed that he was injured, so I think that All might right. be a little bit. Yeah. Okay. Um, I'm not... Yeah. Well, you know, like Heather says, you serious? And uh, you know, that's what he said. Oh, you know, whether that's true or not, I don't know. But um, anyway, we'll bring in Simon. Simon, five nil. Merry Christmas! Wow, amazing. What a day! I mean, it's a baking day in this house today, and there's been a lot of great stuff being baked up in that team over a period of yeah. time, and it's just lovely to see it all come together. So. It's got that feeling of cooking on gas. You know, we've made cookies today. And talking of cookies, again, there were yeah. two that did incredibly well. And and again, a shout to Lewis Cook. Obviously, Dom's doing the business. You know, he's prancing around like Bambi. Mm. He's doing his business. <laughs> yeah. He is. But, and you know right. what? Someone... If someone on chat's asked for it. And, you know, to make you smile, to make Morgan, to make John smile, we're going to play a second goal again. Because we can, it's raw fan footage, so this is all right. Here we go, enjoy. I was wrong. <laughs> I was wrong. Uh, I, you know what? That's uh, that's so Bournemouth. Even at two 0 our fans are singing "Easy, Easy." Oh, I love it. And also, I I think I heard the "We School When We Want" chant as well. But yeah, like you're saying, you know, Dom had a brilliant game. You know, shout outs to other players. You know, a player that's been overlooked is um, you. Someone mentioned earlier, like Asmir Begovic. Is you know they did have a few shots. I think it was nine after the first forty-five. We had four, three of which were converted or whatever it was. But he was so strong when needed with his saves. Uh, absolutely superb. Hmm. Yeah, I mean, yeah, um, I think I, I think statistically Huddersfield were in the game, but a lot of their efforts were tame, you know, from distance. The one that Beg saved was amazing, um, but throughout the whole game, statistically they were in it, but they weren't really. We were just efficient. Yeah, no, agreed. And you know, John, I mean, you know, where do we go from here in in terms of the next game? I mean, there are some decisions for. In JT to make, you know, is it like stick with the same formation, stick with the same formula? I mean, we're playing a team that's in the lower half of the table, a team that we could maybe do some damage to again. You're looking at this performance thinking, well, if, you know, for you know, scoring five goals, we've got the best goal difference in the league, best goals scored. You're kind of thinking, if it does come down to that, why don't we just pat out the same lot? Or do you think he'll see this as a chance to rotate? Um, it's interesting because of the opposition that we've got next mm. in Wickham, who are pretty unique in the way they play in the championship this year. I mean, the only other team, I think I mentioned this on the Rotherham free for all, but you know, there aren't too many teams that play like with Wickham or Rotherham, how direct they are. And we didn't deal brilliantly with Rotherham, but at the same time, we didn't really play our best attacking football in that game, which we have in this one. Mm. Um, and with with Kelly, with perhaps Simpson again, because there really is no reason to drop him if the formation stays the same. Um, and certainly with Cook, we've got some aerially strong players. Yeah. You know, this the, we can, you know, we can stop them. The thing I w would worry more about against Wickham is just Bournemouth's historical inability to stop crosses at their source. Mm. Um, so I don't know whether we might want to overload the wings a little bit more because the way we tend to play this season has had just one or one on the left and one on the right, which won't do well to stop a team that attacks down the, down the wings and, and crosses frequently. Um, it, it, I really cannot tell you what JT would would put because he has changed things when I don't when I wouldn't have done personally. He has put out formations that no one would have picked. He's made particular tactical changes at perfect moments. Um, the only thing that I felt was a little bit disappointing today was he didn't take Lewis Cook off and rest him at about the hour mark. I think that's the only thing I would have changed about the whole performance today. 
because we were so far in front and he was already resting so long. <laughs> he rested everyone. He just didn't rest Lewis Cook, who's still probably our most important player, I would say. But um, it, he could easily play the same formation and it could be, you know, any, any score if we play like that again. Morgan. Um, thanks. I always want to say something, don't I? Um, <laughs> I think that I think if we're gonna um, it, today was fantastic. Of course, you can't take anything to get away, and I'm gonna say it was faultless, absolutely faultless. After some of the words I said this season, including the word hideous, average, yeah. um, I, I'm feeling all right this evening, like many Bournemouth fans. But I think in the next game, the Championship is a very, very long season. Uh, Saturday, Tuesday, Saturday, Wednesday. And I do think Sam Surridge, after um, the performance, you know, coming off the bench and scoring for what he did against, oh, it feels like ages ago now. Um, I can't remember the game, but where he scored. Um, but yeah, I think Sam Surridge does deserve a start against um, Wickham on Tuesday, just because he, his attitude, the amount of goals, I think that's what... Uh, for this season now. Um, so it's just fantastic for the at such a long age. And I think he does, in some games, as Kirk and other have mentioned, he does need to be up top with Solanke. And yeah. maybe in midweek, we could, I hate to say it after the brilliant strike, maybe rest Stan, maybe rest David Brooks, because they ha play a lot of games and they haven't had much rest time. So, um, but as a man of the match, I'm going to go for David Brooks for that strike. I thought it was outstanding. And, uh, I'm going to go and get a beer. So have a nice evening, guys. Nice one, Morgan. Thank you very much. Really appreciate it. And uh, you slightly huffed at uh, what Morgan said there, Simon. Was that a disagreement? Yeah, I mean, I think this is a classic moment of Bournemouth need to guard against complacency. Yeah. And what I would do is I would say to the team, get straight out there, you know, almost start the same. Put your foot down, start fast, get the business done then make the changes. You know, too many times in history, we make changes because we want to give people games and we don't yeah. start fast enough. And then we're kind of on the back foot. We look a bit lackadaisical, et cetera. So my attitude would be get out there, do it again, start as fast and then make the changes. Just get the three points and move out because Wickham aren't going to come back, you know, from being too old down. I mean, they might do now, said it, touch wood. Um, but that's what I would do. That's why I kind of huffed, because I'm a great believer that if you've got your pedal to the metal, keep it down. Go again, push hard, then take the foot off. Almost like what happened today. Then make the changes, then give the players the rest. So with Lewis Cook, I'd play him again. But with the attitude of, I'm going to take you off after 60 minutes, get the business done. Yeah, agreed. Um, uh, Craig, can we give a quick shout out to Philip Billing today? Because, you know, he, he put in a... You know, decent a couple of shifts recently, and he did the same again today. He, you know, obviously he had the um, the sort of you know impetus to perform because he was playing his former club. But you know, it, his performance I think was sort of encapsulated by this turn he did in the second half, where he just managed to take away two of their midfielders and then turned on the ball, set us on the counter attack. I thought we had a really good game today. I think he's been good. The previous three games. Um... Barnsley played all right against Swansea and today as well. Um, and Andy Booth mentioned as well in the preview video what a good professional he was there, um, that he, the club were disappointed to, for him to leave, mm. um, which maybe we're seeing the real player that they saw coming out now because when Andy said that, I thought, well, he hasn't really done much here, but <laughs> he does. You know, I didn't say that. But, you know, I, I did think to myself, well, he hasn't really done much. You know, <laughs> back in the last season, we, we happily shipped him back to you. But, um, yeah, I think he's I think he's really doing well, performing well. Um, again, he can't head a ball still. That's still a big problem for a six-foot-two tall guy. But he's, you know, making the movements. He's making intelligent passes. Um, and fair play to him, you know. Hopefully, he continues to prove us all wrong, continues to prove me wrong, especially. Um, well, if, yeah, I mean, I, I you know, I do agree with that. I mean, uh, John, if you I've, I've asked a lot of people for man of the match, and they've all said Solanke. If you had to name, uh, name your man of the match today, but not Dom Solanke, 
Um, which of the 10 players would you give it to today? I think I, I raved about Stanislas earlier. Uh, and um, I would uh, just, just in contrast, because I think when I said before that the goal wasn't as good because of the Huddersfield defence, that isn't to say that it wasn't a very good goal. Yeah, yeah, it will yeah. be on probably win goal of the month and yeah. definitely be an our goal of the year contender. Um, the dump, the, just the very slight dummy to get past the last man, that was the most impressive bit for me because he ran through about 30 yards of empty space. But then the dummy to be his last man, to just to send him one way and completely mess him, get him through on the other, that was that was outstanding. Um, yeah, I think Stanislas was 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 my man of the match personally because of he did so much. Brooks and Solanke was fantastic in the attack, didn't have to do much defensively. Stanislas had a complete game for me, um, and that's why I'd, I'd give him my man of the match. Yeah, and Simon, yours, but not Dom. <laughs> uh, I'm going to go with Lewis Cook again. Uh, one of the things that Lewis Cook was criticised for in many games was his first touch and those kind of loose things where he gave balls away. There's none of that. Uh, his movement, his aggression, he's just owning that midfield. And what he does is enabling players like Billing, for example, to do what Billing does best slightly further up the pitch with a slightly lesser defensive responsibility. So again, as I think I said last time, and he's the engine of the midfield that makes it all tick. And without that happening, both defensively and bringing the ball forward, a lot of the other things wouldn't happen the way they're happening. So he's my man of the match. Brilliant. Well, you know what? It's been a cracking day. We're going to wrap it up there because we've been on over an hour. Um, thank you so much for coming on. John, really appreciate it, mate. Thank you. Yeah, nice to be on. Cheers. Thank you. Uh, Simon, once again, thank you. Take care, guys. Stay well. Have the cherries and Craig, as ever. Cheers, buddy. Cheers, Sam. Take care, mate. Will do. And uh, yeah, thank you very much. It's been a good day now. Subscribe to this channel now. Give this video a thumbs up if you can, because tonight, a match day experience vlog, and there's going to be a hell of a lot of content uh, from the stadium. So we'll kind of go through our match days, uh, both from a fan perspective of someone that didn't go and lots of yours that did go, raw footage and a lot, lot more. Um, that's going to be on the channel tonight where it's being put together as I actually speak. Um, also, Tom's player ratings video as well is coming on soon. On Friday night, playing football against Kirk Tovey's lot against, 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 at Little Down, um, we lost. Tom's probably going to say it's because he wasn't playing, but uh, I had a shocker of a game. I might, have, I might as well have gift-wrapped Kirk Tovey's first goal. I just played it into his hands and yeah. Anyway, we lost. Not, I'm not bitter at all. Um, and also, of course, the podcast as well. And we're going to get perspectives from those who went and those who didn't. So it's going to be a second look at the game and it's going to be on your podcast app, but also, of course, on the YouTube channel as well. So, yeah, plenty of content still to come. Do subscribe and do like this video as well with that little thumbs up. Appreciate it. Five star Bournemouth did it again. What a performance to greet the return of fans at Dean Court. We always knew that the home fans can make a difference and the boost that it provided the players in red and black today, well, it was more than evident, wasn't it? Wow. 5 nil. More of the same on Tuesday, please. Till the next one. Oscar,